Hey everybody, my name is RG Long and I write the books. Thanks so much for joining us on this wonderful Monday evening at 9 p.m. We're here every week, uh, you know, unless everything falls apart, which sometimes it does. I do admit that that is the reality that we live with, but this week things are working out well. I am madly uh, dashing to get finished with my newest release so that I can get it out to you guys, my readers. Uh, very much looking forward to that. But uh, better news is that you don't have to hear me talk about my new book because I have the wonderfully talented, wonderfully prolific Sarah K.L. Wilson, who I would love for you to get to know a little bit more about and have a chance to hear from her and also like we normally do uh, give her a little bit of quiz and talk about what you guys as readers like to hear in your books and what she as an author likes to write so hi there Sarah how are you doing well, I'm doing good how about you fantastic uh, Monday nights are always exciting for us as we have uh, we found out uh, you are a mom and so there are always little kids running around I'm actively checking my door over here to see if we're going to be joined by anybody. Uh, only slightly nervous about that, just a little bit. Uh, so Sarah, tell us about how you got started. Yep, that could be a problem here oh, too. Totally, yeah. <laughs> tell us how you got started as an author. Tell us just a little bit about like your, your author journey. So I, I, I eBooks. I was having a hard time finding books I wanted to read at my public library and on my books store shelves in my small little community. I figured I'd tapped the fantasy market completely and I, I was all out, which of course wasn't true, but just in my area. And so I thought, well, I should start writing to read. And that started my very long and delightful adventure into writing fantasy books. That was actually quite some time ago now, back in 2004. I started writing my first fantasy book, and it took me quite a few years to finish. <laughs> and I read a lot more of them now. So you started you started actively writing in two thousand and four. That's awesome. It's it's it was pretty, pretty um slow goers. It took me three years to write that first epic fantasy tome, and then to find out it couldn't be published and shelve it and then a couple more years to get my ego back to the point where I could write again <laughs> no I completely understand. and try my next kick at the can yeah no I completely <laughs> understand that do you do you still have that on the digital shelf somewhere that first novel of yours I, I lost the computer files and my computer was trashed but I still have the old hard, hard copy that I printed out. It's huge and oh, terrible. Like on eight and a half by 11, like the, the normal size computer paper, like printed out that way. <laughs> yeah, totally. Inside one of those accordion files from oh, back in the no, day. That's that's amazing. That That's a treasure because that means a lot to you. That's how you got started writing. That's a big deal. Oh no, that's fantastic. Uh, when you were reading through all um, fantasy books that ever existed, uh, in your community, what were some ones that like you <laughs> that stuck out to you? That you some of your favorites? Well, I was a massive Wheel of Time fan. I reread that series every year, all over again, and I did that from the time I was fifteen. So I, I got to watch the last few come yeah. out with the two year gaps in between the times they were published. Yeah, <laughs> I I loved those. They were huge for me, and Terry all of Terry Pratchett's mm -hmm. books. I think are completely genius, and I've reread most of those many times too. Uh, yeah, I would I would imagine going back and rereading Wheel of Time over and over got a little more difficult to do each year because of how the series kept growing. I remember those coming out when I was uh, in high school, and remember that happening, like and seeing that. That's awesome. I was um, both me and my brother and my cousin, who is my age, and his sister. We were all super into Wheel of Time. And when a book came out, they were so expensive in hardcover. You'd have to buy one for about forty-five bucks yes. Canadian, and ever afford it at a time. So you have to wait in line between four people to, for your turn to read the book. <laughs> <laughs> You're pooling your resources so that you could actually afford the book, and then like passing it around. You guys are like your own public library. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, actually, so I was looking through uh, your books here a while ago, and like I, I had said, you are prolific. There, if someone goes to your uh, author page on Amazon, they're going to see a whole bunch of volumes with your name on it. And 
one that uh, struck me and I've seen uh, coming off uh, with your name on it. It's called Dragon School. And so what uh, we do here on the podcast a little bit is I'm going to s- ask you some questions. So in, instead of talking about Dragon School, something that I know you're probably very familiar with, having written 20 plus books in that series, what I'd like to do is actually talk to you about Fairy Prison. All right, so not not Dragon School, but instead Ooh. Fairy Prison. So I'm gonna uh, I did some research today, just a little bit, on uh, fairies in lore and culture, and actually it turns out that fairies aren't all like Tinkerbell. Uh, some of them are a lot um, scarier. In fact, a lot of lore they're they're very mean. And so I want to ask you just three quick questions about fairies and see how well you could do in a maybe fairy prison. So uh, fairies are are known to do uh, some mischievous things, some of them more mischievous and more hurtful than others, like giving your soul to uh, A, the devil, uh, B, your enemy, or C, your brother, which do you think it is? I'm going to go with B, be oh, your so enemy. I totally would have been that way as well. It was A, the devil. So I don't know how fairies have like a connection to <sighs> the devil, but apparently they do. They can just take your soul and deliver it straight to uh, straight to the devil. So watch out for fairies. They might. Maybe there's a quota system, like eat a certain number per month or something. I like that. Or maybe it's how they like they make their pixie dust out of the souls of other people. It seems like a much more darker thing. <laughs> so most of the time, uh, fairies in, in literature are, are women. So there was one fairy mistress in particular who would seduce men. And she would seduce men to either A, uh, become their slave, B, become their lover, C, both A and B, become their slave and their lover, or D, to kill them. Oh, I'm going with D on that D one. D to kill them, yeah. Well, it's, it would make sense, right, if they're taking your souls. Uh, I actually had to reread this part several times. It is both A and B. This one particular fairy would like, apparently seduce men in order to uh, become their slave, but also become their lover. The thing is, the man would be trapped in that position until he could find a replacement for himself. So maybe it's oh, like a good idea. That does first, seem awkward. But then he had to, the guy would actually eventually have to find a replacement. I don't know how that works out. Uh, the more I read up on fairies, the weirder it gets. Like the fact that there's a guy fairy. Didn't know that. Uh, there are male fairies. One in particular whose name was Love Talker. Love Talker. Uh, and he seduces shepherdesses and milkmaids and ruins either A, their goods, B, their reputations, or C, their good looks. I'm going to go with C, their good uh, looks. I would think the milkmaids and the shepherdesses would want their good looks to stay intact. Uh, it was uh, B, their reputations. I don't know how the reputation of a shepherdess and uh, a, a milkmaid typically are, but maybe if they have good standing in the community, <laughs> this guy would seduce them in order to make them look They're like, notaries, notary oh, publics. No. Like, that seems like a strange thing <laughs> for uh, fairies to do. So you, you have just finished, you, you finished Dragon School and you've written those books, but what you are promoting right now, I actually have your cover on the screen, is Summer Night Bridge of Legends 1. First off, Oh my goodness, this is a beautiful cover. I absolutely love it. Uh, it's just... It's... I love it. Um, Legend of the Cryptids. Oh man, it is, it is a gorgeous cover. Um, I'm going to read a little bit of your uh, blurb in here just so that readers can be familiar with it. It says, he has just five days to save his sister from a legendary dragon. Uh, Tamerlan has just five days to save a sister or she'll be sacrificed to a legendary dragon at the height of the Summer Night Festival. Uh, oh my goodness. I I am in on cover and blur. But do you want to tell uh, readers a little bit more about this book? 
So this is an interesting book because it has two protagonists and they both want opposing things. So one is Tamerlan, this young um, alchemist apprentice whose sister's in a dire situation. He discovers that she's going to be this year's sacrifice to the dragon and there's just no way he's going to let that happen. Meanwhile, our other protagonist, Marielle, is a center for the city watch and they can, can smell spiritual residues and... Um, and magic of all kinds and so when she walks through the city she can smell crimes about to happen or having had been ha committed and follow their scent trails like a hunting dog so she is trying to catch tamerlan while he is trying to save his sister <clears throat> they can't both succeed and so it makes for quite an interesting story i love the conflict that you've got brewing there like that's that's really neat uh, what was one of the most fun things about writing this particular book? Uh, what was the most thing that was just like, man, this is just a blast to write? So this is meant to be like a summer blockbuster film, but a book. So the end has a really huge cinematic event, so big that I, I struggled to write, but it was also the part I was looking forward to the whole sure. time. I, I I couldn't wait. I wonder if I wonder how spoilery I should get. Maybe not that spoilery, yeah. but if you've seen the the movie Inception, where the world kind of goes upside down a little bit all around them, and the walls become the ceiling, and the ceiling is yeah. the walls. You know, and th there's a moment like that towards the end that I was really excited for, and I really enjoyed writing that part. It just flew onto the oh, page. No. I, I love that. And summer blockbuster for a novel titled Summer Night just seems right. Like, it just seems like that's what you're supposed to do. That's right. Yeah. And then I also see that book two is ready for pre-order, and it is called Dawn Spell. Yes. It picks up right where the other one left off. Yes. It picks up right where the other one left off. No, so this is, uh, this is mm -hmm. like I said, something that just... I love the cover. It looks great. The blurb is fantastic. And as far as someone who's maybe on the end of their summer reading list and thinking, okay, school might be starting up in uh, a couple weeks, depending on where you live, or maybe a month. Uh, I've got to, if I'm going to get one more series in, or if I'm going to start looking on one more book, and this would be a fantastic book for somebody to pick up. Um, can you tell us a little bit about like your, you. your website, where people can get a hold of you, things like that? Yep. Um, my website is sarahklwilson.com. That's K-L in the middle, my middle initials. And that has all of my books listed as well as contact information. So you can join my Discord group and hang with the other fans, or you can follow me on social media. Um, all of my books are, um, they are friendly for the 13 plus crowd. Okay. So if you are a younger reader, you don't have to worry about a surprise. <laughs> No, that's good. That's good to know. And actually, your um, your Discord chat group was an interesting thing. I have come on there, and you have a very active community uh, in your Discord channel. So that's really neat to see. So if you enjoy uh, chatting it up on Discord, this is definitely something to check out. And I actually have the link here on the video if you're paying attention and watching it on video. The link's right there, but it's also going to be in the show notes later on as well. So you can go and click that link and enjoy some really active fantasy stuff you've got authors who come in there you uh host questions anything else you wanted to tell people about your discord channel that's just a really neat thing yeah every friday or most fridays we have someone come in who's another author and we chat with them about their books it's uh not quite as cool as this podcast no no i absolutely loved coming on there it was a blast like i said you got a super active community that some really great question questions and so that was really, really neat to do. So like I said, if you do the Discord channels, you should definitely check this one out for sure. Sarah, thank you so much for coming on. And like I said, oh my goodness, this book just looks uh, beautiful and super excited for it to, to uh, pick up a copy. And then for the second one that's coming out, September 6th. Now, do you, have, do you have plans for this to be an ongoing series? If you've got Wheel of Time in your background, right, then you've got, you know, long book series. What, what's your plan with this one here? We're planning five to six episodes for this one. So it's not super long, but it should take us through maybe a full year. Okay, fantastic. And the, the series title is Bridge of Legends. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. right. Awesome. Hey, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us and telling us a little bit about your books. It sounds fantastic. If you've got any questions that you'd like to ask Sarah, 
uh, put them in the comments below so that she can get a hold of them later and I'll be tagging her in this so that she can see them and you can see them and thank you so much for joining Sarah thank you for hanging out with us thank you for having me RG Long it's been a real pleasure oh, you are so welcome hey readers thank you so much for joining us and as always i hope that you've got some really great books and that you enjoy the journey we'll see you next week